ahora, pero solamente unos minutos antes de salir, recibimos llamadas que podrían en, los, en las próximas horas nosotros recibir visas para un tercer país. Todavía no estamos en libertad de decir que tercer país es para el otro grupo de cubanos eh, y hay otras personas que queremos ayudar. Uh, uh, briefly, uh, I must say that we are very grateful to God and to everyone who has been searching for the truth. Uh, in this case, uh, we welcome the uh, press from the Bahamas and the people who are here from the Bahamas, the uh, leaders of the uh, Haitian, commu Haitian community that are, that are here with us. Marlene Bastille and others. Marlene? Yes. Um, we welcome everybody um, from the Bahamas because we want the Baham uh, Bahamian people to know the truth. This is not against the Bahamas. This is a search for the truth. And we have said that from the beginning and we are we're praying to God that God allows us to, to demonstrate to the Bahamian people that we do care about them, that this was just the wrongdoing of a group of people that it, it did not even represent the rest of the armed forces of the Bahamas or the police forces of the Bahamas. And we fully understand that. But the truth is not completely out. It's only a little bit of it. I will read a, a letter, uh, the, an improvised, this is kind of improvised, you can see the uh, The letter will, will be uh, given to me a little bit later, but I'll give you the, I'll give you the idea in English of uh, what we are sending to the uh, Prime Minister uh, of the Bahamas, uh, the Honorable Perry Gladstone Christie. Uh, Honorable Prime Minister, because we are people of faith in search of the truth, we come to you after the many sad reports that are now coming out publicly, vindicating our claims of gross human rights violations, in the hope that you will set aside your defensive attitude and deploy a true will to address those gross human rights violations being committed against undocumented migrants detained under your jurisdiction. As you are aware, the episode of torture by the guards against a group of detainees that has been leaked to the media is only the tip of the iceberg what really, of what really went on at Carmichael Road. There is much more to be investigated, according to accounts of horrified victims. Unless these things are investigated and brought to daylight, we have no choice but to continue to advocate for the truth to come out. But there is an alternative and it rests entirely on your goodwill. Mr. Christie, women at the center were harassed and exploited sexually by the guards in order to be able to survive, according to the recorded and on the phone testimonies that we have from the victims, a sample of which we have available for you. The children were exposed to the harsh environment of, of oppressed adults, witnessing beatings and sexual misconduct of the guards and to the, uh, to the spraying of tear gas on them by the guards. A 10 days old child had to be submerged in dirty water when the guards forced the mother with her child in her arms into the building where they had just sprayed the tear gas. A Guyanese man died before the horrified eyes of the detainees claiming for his medication and medical attention. All this while the guards stood making fun of him while the detainee gave the man mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation. We, do, do we need to say any more before we hear from you the good news that you will immediately make all the victims and witnesses available to the press and investigators, not only for the horrible incident already exposed by the leaked police report, but also for all the other crimes committed by a group of guards in the Carmichael Center against women and children detained there, we are not looking for revenge, sir. We're looking to impede that those same people will commit the same acts in the future when, when everybody goes about their daily lives and forget this tragic episode. Mr. Prime Minister, by you suddenly repatriating the victims and witnesses to Cuba in the midst of an investigation, when you had visas to go to pa when they had visas to go to Panama, you acquired a moral and perhaps judicial duty to vindicate such unfortunate decision. We respectfully ask for you to commit yourself to requesting from the Cuban government not to be threatening with reprisal those victims and witnesses that you suddenly repatriated to Cuba in order to have them change their testimony. Please ask the Cuban government to make them available to the investigators and the press immediately. Since we wrote 
to the government of the Bahamas the first time asking for an investigation of our allegations, we had to lead a hard struggle for the truth to begin surfacing as we see in the media and the reports leaked to the press today. Please be assured that no at no time did we want to harm your beautiful country and your democratically elected government. In fact, we prefer to inflict the harm upon ourselves when Jesus Alexis Gomez and I did a prolonged hunger strike in search of the truth that today we are seeing flourishing. We are eager to receive from you the frank and open spirit of cooperation with, the, with finding the truth necessary for high public officials when you handle such a delicate situation as gross violations of human rights of incarcerated children, women, and men. Needless to repeat, Mr. Christie, it is fun a fundamental canon of a democracy and due process that in order to conduct a thorough investigation, the victims and the witnesses must not be concealed from the investigators and the case of a, in the case of a situation like the one at hand, that the findings be made public in its entirety to dispel any suspicion of cover-up that there may exist. We encourage you to stand tall on the sacred post that you hold, put politics aside, and give the world the good news that the truth is more important to you than an insincere image, and that you do care for those tortured, abused, mistreated, and humiliated human beings whose physical wounds might heal in a while, but whose spiritual wounds could last a lifetime. We further encourage you to deploy the courage to sit down together with us in the table of brotherhood so that we can all work together to find justice and harmony in the rest of this process. Had dialogue been the original approach, we would not have been where we are today. You looking at us as a bunch of disruptive demonstrators damaging the good image of your government and us looking at you as the defensive leader of a democratic nation who, in detriment of the best traditions of his nation, actively engages in trying to cover up the horrible acts by a group of unscrupulous guards who torture men, sexually harass women, expose children to the existing cruelty of the detention center, and cost, possibly cause the death of at least one detainee from Guyana in the Carmichael Road detention center, assuring that you will find in us real friends if you join the endeavor for the truth. We remain respectfully, Ramon Saul Sanchez, Alexis uh, Gomez, uh, Alexis uh, uh, Gomez and uh, the Democracy Movement. Uh, we must say that uh, abuses have been committed not only against Cubans, but also against people from other nationalities. We must, we have to say that because of the uh, humble way of the Haitian community, sorry, Haitian people, uh, and 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 the feeling that they have that, that they are defenseless, the Haitian people have endured tremendous abuses uh, at the hands of this group of uh, guards in the Bahamas, unfortunately. We have shocking testimony of some of those people, and the government of the Bahamas in uh, in order to keep, unfortunately, keep the truth from coming out, rushed to, to take uh, 279 Haitians out of the Bahamas detention center and send them back to Haiti in the last couple of weeks, just like they did with the uh, Cubans who were repatriated to Cuba in order for them not to be able to uh, speak to the media, which is what we wanted them to do, or to the ind independent investigators whose voices we're still to hear. We don't understand why their voices have, have been, haven't been raised saying, hey, if we are going to investigate something professionally, you can't send the victims away and you can't hide them. You have to present them. We, have, we need to interview them. Uh, we have here uh, Marlene Vasquez, who is with us here. She's a, she's a leader of the Haitian community. And uh, uh, we just wanted her to be aware of what is taking place. And I, as I said in this letter that we're going to take a little bit later to the Consulate General of uh, the Bahamas here, we asked the Prime Minister of the Bahamas, Mr. Barry Christie, we asked uh, Thomas 